Hi, I'm Dean with Old English Outfitters, and today we're going to be talking about night sights. This is going to be a little bit more of a discussion video because I feel as though there's a lot of misconceptions about night sights and what they're good for, how they are used, and nobody really does the service to you guys of explaining it. Uh, this was not something that was explained to me. I figured it out for myself uh, at my other job where I was having to use a pistol with night sights and a weapon light on the regular. Uh, and I figured some things out while I was doing that, and I thought, huh, nobody really ever taught this to me or explained really what the point of night sights is, because everyone will tell you, you got to have night sights on your pistol. Uh, it's practically a law of the gun industry. You buy a new pistol, you need to put night sights on it. While not everyone subscribes to that, uh, it is a theme for the gun industry nonetheless. Now, a little bit of history. Uh, night sights were first made commercially available in the U.S. in the early 80s, uh, between 81 and 83. And Trijicon played a large part in the implementation of them into the U.S. civilian market. Now, what is a night sight? Any sighting system could be a scope or a red dot or iron sights that has a vial of tritium. Tritium in its gaseous form is a radioactive isotope off of hydrogen, but it is light producing. It will most often glow green. And while there are some things you can do to, to, to make it glow different colors, most night sights you will find are going to be green glowing. Uh, any radioactive material has what's called a half-life, and the half-life of tritium is 10 to 12 years, and that 10 to 12 years is on a deteriorating scale. So, you get a new set of night sights. Over the course of the years, they will start to slowly dim, and as the years go by, you get close to the end of that 10 to 12 years, they will dim rather rapidly until they go all the way dead. Everyone says you need night sights, and the question would be, why? You walk into any gun store in the United States and there's going to be some guy in a tackle vest telling you you have to have night sights. Bad guys are out there in the dark, you need to be able to shoot at them at the dark. But we don't shoot at things in the dark, right? Uh, there's a term called PID, positive target identification. We don't shoot at things we cannot identify. Uh, the example that is often given is, you know, you hear something go bump in the night, you grab your gun, you peek around the corner of your, your bedroom door and you see something moving over there and you just start shooting. Uh, well, it turns out it was just your kid home from college, and you ended up shooting him, right? Or scaring him half to death and putting around in the wall because you didn't have anything to illuminate, so you didn't have an idea what you were shooting at. We don't want to do that, okay? Uh, night sights should be used as a reference point before illuminating your target with artificial light. You should be using them to build a sight picture while remaining hidden in darkness without revealing your position with a light, and then illuminating your target. We are never going to be shooting at something and also seeing the effect of night sights, okay? If you are shooting and you can see those three dots glowing, you're doing something wrong, okay? Uh, low light conditions notwithstanding, I understand. But uh, my point is, night sights are only there to build a sight picture on your gun. Again, we'll go with the house example, okay? You hear something go bump in the night. You know your house far better than they do. You have your gun at the low ready. You peek out from your bedroom door. You peek around that corner and you see something moving down there. Instead of aiming and firing immediately, we would aim the gun and because we have night sights on our pistol, we can see where our front and rear sight is. We can build a proper or as close to proper sight picture as possible while remaining completely hidden in darkness ourselves and not giving up the potential advantage of surprise or the potential protection that the darkness affords us. The other person does not know we are there, right? So we build that sight picture and now we can see that we are lined up properly on target before announcing ourselves or more importantly, illuminating that person with artificial light. I don't care if it's turning the lights on in your house, you have a weapon mounted light or you are holding a handheld flashlight, there should be light. We do not shoot unless we can see what we are shooting at. Once you turn any lights on, those night sights are gone. They are now just iron sights. It is worst, or you could say, the most apparent with a weapon mounted light because that is the most you will ever backlight those iron sights. Uh, if you put any sight on any pistol, be they fiber optic, fiber optic may glow just slightly, uh, night sights or factory iron sights of any material, as soon as you backlight them, they are all equal. They are all black nubs on a pistol slide. There are none that are going to be more visible than the other when it comes to tritium vials or anything like that. If that's the case, when we go to illuminate them, are night sights 100% necessary? I would still argue yes. 
okay? They do add functionality to your pistol without losing anything. They make you able to do more without taking away from what you can already do. However, night sights are one half to a whole picture. Having night sights on your gun without having a weapon mounted light or a handheld flashlight gains you absolutely nothing. You are still shooting at the dark and in the dark and you still shouldn't be. So artificial illumination on yourself in some way, I would argue is a necessity. And when used in correspondence with night sights, you gain yourself a potential advantage. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. In addition, we do have an Instagram, at OE Outfitters. Go over there, check it out. If you like what you see, please give us a follow. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.